This is going to be a look at some Patrick Queen films, specifically focusing on the last three games against the Browns, Tampa Bay, and the Saints, with a little bit of film thrown in against the Giants. Look, he's having a hell of a season so far. Guy's in his third NFL season, still only 23 years old. I think there's guys in college that are going to be drafted next year that are only like six or eight months younger than him. I'm not necessarily linebackers per se. The guys that are at, at Patrick Queen's level in terms of where – first-round draft picks at linebacker generally aren't redshirt guys like Will Anderson, although he's an OLB, Patrick Queen's an inside linebacker. Look, he's got three and a half sacks this year, which is his career high. He's already got 58 tackles. He's got a really good chance to exceed his 106 tackles that he had in his rookie year when he was 21 years old. Eight quarterback hits already. An interception. Could have one or two more. We know that. In my opinion, this is the time of year. I'm talking about the last three weeks, maybe the last four weeks that coincides or parallels last year's improvement in play, which I think began in after the Chargers game. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he started to play better after week six of last year, maybe in week six when Josh Bynes had a great game against the Chargers. And in my opinion, Patrick Queen's only going to get better playing next to Roquan Smith. I think some of the film from the Saints game actually shows that already. He only had five tackles against the Saints – Four tackles against the Bucks, 11 tackles, three tackles for loss against the Browns with a sack, a sack against the Giants in week six. I think his last four games is something like 28, 29 tackles, two sacks, three tackles for loss, two quarterback hits, a pass defense. He's, and in that time, he's playing about 95% of the snaps. I think we're getting a new version of Patrick Queen that looks like the guy that we all – hoped we had and drafted and I think there were some it's possible that there was some too immediate judgment on whether or not this guy would be re-signed I'm not sure you know how he's going to fit in with Roquan Smith you know who's going to get a big contract from the Ravens hopefully in my opinion it looks like these two fit really well together these plays are going to be packaged in terms of pass plays first with the different coverages labeled for you and then some run plays away from him and some run plays to him all right, so here he is playing man against Kamara against the Saints last week. Little play action. Kamara running out into the flats. Queen is there for a pass breakup. He's asked to do a lot of things. It's, it's not like he's only playing one or two coverages for real. This isn't Wink's system where he's generally just playing man on the back, even though I'm showing you this play you know, where he is playing man on Alvin Kamara and doing a great job of it. There's multiple coverages he's asked to play. I'm going to show you some examples that um, I, I've always offered that I think inside linebackers play are asked to play too many coverages in the NFL, and sometimes they don't react well. This is going to be a seam protect on the pass. Now he's going to be protecting the seam from the other side of the field, and then the underneath route is going to be open. It's kind of a consistent theme in a couple of our coverages. I don't have the down and distance labeled here for you, to be honest with you. I will on the next play. He still is able to make tackles, don't get me wrong, but there's some times where I feel like we're carrying – people vertically, and we're leaving underneath the zones wide open. Watch Bowser here on the left who dropped from the boundary. He's going to point to the crosser, and Queen, for whatever reason, is carrying that vertical that you can also see Geno Stone is covering as well. So when you're asked to play multiple coverages, it's possible that sometimes you interpret or read or react to a coverage that you shouldn't in that manner. Now, this is cover three, second and long, where I do have the down and distance for you. And we're okay with giving up an underneath route. You can, you're going to see it's similar conceptually to what I just showed you, except now I have the all-22 view, and that last one was the end zone angle. Queen is going to carry, and you can see he actually turns his helmet and looks at the vertical by a receiver from his left. And it's second and long, so we're content with giving up an underneath reception, right? It's going to create like a third and six, third and seven, something like that. Hopefully that's the design of the coverage, even though in this case it didn't work out. It, it, it created a third and four that they converted on the next play to the boundary. What, what does he do when he's not asked to play a coverage where he has to worry about seam protect, protecting the seam? He's a lot better this year, if you ask me. He'd be a physical with crossers. And we saw this last year, though, for real. Again, week six, week seven, somewhere around there, he got better at certain things. It seems like his play improves as the season goes on. And to me, here's an example of a crosser, in this case Taysom Hill, being redirected by Queen, taken out of his route. And unfortunately, we, we lost the edge protection 
on this right side. I think this is Houston, I believe, diving inside, and there's no corresponding you know, tackle looping outside. It doesn't look like that inside move is part of the stunt that's called for. Houston gets taken down. There's no contained player for the quarterback. Nothing Queen could do in terms of leaving Taysom Hill to go get the quarterback who would then just dump the ball off to Taysom Hill. All right, a third and five, and he's going to tackle Barkley short of the line to go. Of course, this is when Owe got his penalty. We would have had a fourth and one after this or fourth and short. I'm sure the Giants would have gone for it. Point being, Patrick Queen is playing a lot of different coverages, sometimes man on a running back, sometimes zone where he's you know, got to carry people with some depth. Sometimes he's got the freedom to care, to to deal with physically a crosser. And in some cases, he's playing underneath zone where he's going to let him catch it in front and then try to make the tackle. Let me know what you think of his play so far. Like I said, 58 tackles through nine games. I think he's go he's just going to make bigger plays. And the one thing that should be mentioned, and I think I mentioned in an earlier video and a lot of people have talked about on social media, is how unselfish he seems to be. He's going to pick this left guard to free up Houston for the sack. And this is what great defenses do. Are we a great defense yet? No. But this is what they do. They make plays for each other. And the coaches design schemes for guys that are winning, guys that are hitting home runs. They design schemes to use their skills. And Patrick Queen, to me, deserves a lot of credit for his willingness to blow up this guard and free up Justin Houston for a big sack. He's at, Queen is actually a little bit better at that technique than Roquan Smith, Smith looked like against the Saints, but I only saw Smith do it twice. And maybe it's something new. Maybe he didn't do that with the Bears. Some of these blitzes against the Browns was unbelievable. This we would call boom. Boom, the first letter is a B. So in our system, the weak side inside linebacker is the bull, and the strong side guy is the Mike. In the Ravens system, apparently the strong side guy is the Mike, and the weak side guy is the Will. So I don't know what the blitz would be called, but for us this was just boom, where the bull goes first, or in this case the Will, and the Mike goes second. Behinds almost finishes it, unable to corral Jacoby Brissett, and then Queen finishes him off and gets a sack. Like I said, three and a half sacks this year. He's had some other situations where he's forced fumble. He forced a fumble uh, late in the second quarter against the Giants. So let's transition to some run plays. Again, as the Will linebacker, it's not always going to be run away from you, but this first set of plays is going to be run away. We're going to package them together, and then we'll look at some run plays to him. I like his physicality this year. He showed this some last year, don't get me wrong. But when he's taking on people, look where he's taking on this pulling guard at the line of scrimmage. Okay, we would try to encourage inside linebackers to take on blocks at the line of scrimmage. We would we would kind of lie to them for real. If the line of scrimmage was here, we would say, hey, if you're taking on blocks in this area here, we're five and five. If you're taking on blocks at the line of scrimmage, we're eight and two. If you're taking on blocks in, in the backfield, we're 10 and 0. That's a lie. You know, you're not going to be taking on blocks in the backfield, you know, generally as an inside linebacker, because you got to read it, you got to find the hole and try to fit it. This is an example of Queen taking on a pulling guard away from him on the other side of the field from where he lined up at the line of scrimmage. Yes, there's some fall forward by Barkley because no one else is really there. So he gets like three yards, maybe two. But I think you can see, even from the all-22 angle, Patrick Queen played that fantastic. Queen and Bynes are kind of arguing here, trying to figure out something. I'm not sure what. They're trying to get things aligned. And the ball is going to be snapped quick to Barkley on runaway. And watch the fit here. He doesn't climb over the guard. This is the type of thing that Roquan Smith does in terms of taking on a lineman, sometimes diving on the backside because that's the way you're going to win. And Barkley cuts it back, and there he is. That's an elite play. That's not... That's not your run-of-the-mill play in terms of dealing with the lineman. He, can, he can't climb over the top here. This lineman has already out-leveraged him. He goes underneath, sheds him. That's pretty damn good shedding of a block, if you ask me. I don't know how he could have done that any better. It's a group effort. Don't get me wrong. It's a, he might not even got credit for the tackle there. But he's doing his job consistently in terms of filling gaps. All right, run away. Watch his helmet on this motion. He notices something. It was multiple times in this game where he noticed something in the Browns' alignment, in the situation. We'll run this back one more time so you can see it. Watch, see his helmet? Look. 
the guy in motion, and that's when he decides to go. Simultaneous to that, you can see Chuck Clark is walking up, almost almost kind of replacing him. He's, he's not taking his place necessarily. I don't know. He could be, but it doesn't look like it to me. The point is, though, everything is coordinated. Everything is connected. That motion is a trigger for two things to happen, for Queen to go and Chuck to replace. So, so if there is some complimentary play where the quarterback keeps it, this guy goes in motion, I'm assuming that the corner would cover the guy in motion, and then Chuck would be here to deal with this tight end if he released and or if the quarterback keeps it around the end. This is a, this is a high-level play by Patrick Queen. It's a high-level play by our defense being coordinated. It's our nickel defense. You can see we got four linemen, two inside backers, so it's our 4-2. And sometimes you got to do stuff like this to stop the run if you've only got a six six guys in the box. I don't know if you're as excited as I am. I mean, Queen, to me, when you look at the film, specifically of the last three weeks, he's improving from a higher level of play early in the season than we had seen in 2021. I didn't say that very well, but early in 2021, I thought he was struggling. He improved from that. As the season went on, same situation this year, except his baseline, his foundation early in 2022 was far better than early in 2021, even though we had you know some mistakes, some missed interceptions and such. This time he overlaps the mic on runaway. You can see the tight end, who Clark is assigned to, to guard, goes down to block the mic. So that tight end is essentially occupying two guys. Clark, who's assigned to guard him, and Bynes, who the tight end is assigned to block. So Queen's not going to fit underneath here because there's too much field for the running back to get to the sideline. So what Queen does is just overlaps the mic. It's not intentional. Some schemes play it like that. They just call wrong arm. That's not necessarily what we do, but it's a great play by Queen, even though to me it looks like, like a six-yard gain by the running back. Run to him now. And you're going to see him punch the pulling tight end. I'll rewind it a couple of times for you. Where is he taking on the block? That's important if you ask me. The line of scrimmage is the 25. He's, his right foot is on the 25. He's taking on the block right at the line of scrimmage. We're, we're a little upfield here and getting kicked out by the guard because we're unblocked initially. Actually, JPP's doing a pretty damn good job there. He's just getting expanded by the guard. Nobody else is really able to help except for this nose tackle. And Queen gets involved in the play. If he, if he doesn't fill that gap, if he doesn't take that on at the line of scrimmage, there's going to be a two-way go for the running back. It's still a positive play. Sometimes the offense just executes. But my point is, if he, if he doesn't fill, if he takes this on at the 27, there's going to be a two-way go for the running back because there's space, vertical space between JPP and where Queen takes on that block. Because There's vertical space still, but JPP's in the backfield. Queen is at the line of scrimmage. You want the least amount of space possible horizontally and vertically when you're taking on gap schemes, and you don't want to give that running back a two-way go, like power. Think of our power play. Our guys sometimes cut it, hit it on the backside, cut it back. Sometimes our guys hit it on the front side. All right, a little bit of communication here and then redirecting to the play. We get scooped on the backside by Matabike, and then Chuck Clark doesn't fill. We're in our base front, and we, we still have 12 personnel. Clark, actually, it's 11, my bad. And Clark isn't filling, and Matabike gets scooped. So what I mean is this tackle is going to take over Matabike, and Clark is just going to work horizontally. What happens? This is a little similar to a play I showed you earlier. Queen is playing front side, and then he's going to have to jump back side to get involved in the play because it's really like nobody else is there. See what I mean by Matabike has been scooped? The tackle was able to overtake him. Matabike is like in his four eye, and he's, so he's stepping to the tackle. So that does kind of lend itself to allowing yourself to get scooped if you're in a four eye. That looks like a four eye to me. Clark is going horizontal and never just decides to press vertical where there's a clear seam between Matabike and Jones. Queen's playing the front side, and then he's going to redirect and get involved in the play with Clark. We'd like to see Clark come forward a little bit, but he's not an inside linebacker. right? This is just an example of Queen 
play in the front side block well, and then redirecting because he's so athletic. And it, it seems to me as if he's staying square a whole lot better this year and not turning his shoulders and running and being incapable of redirecting on the backside. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. This is shovel pass, and he's going to stay really square on this and stay on the backside. So when it is pitched underneath to the tight end, it's A-gun. So the back and the tight end are on the same side. There's a shovel pass on the back side of this mesh between the running back and the quarterback. Cool play. I think they used it against us twice. It gets nothing in this example. Now, it's an unbelievable play by Kyle Hamilton, right? All right. But the line of scrimmage you can see was the 42. Look where Queen is making the tackle on the 42. I, I think staying square, we always used to say, allows you to come downhill and then redirect, as opposed to turning your shoulders, being a little bit overly aggressive, not being able to redirect. That was a great example of him staying on the backside of the run concept. I think him and Roquan Smith know that the run play is going to be to this side. I'd like to see Queen press this a little more into the backfield. This is the one where him, Smith, and I think that's Geno Stone's helmet right there, finish off Taysom Hill. I'm glad this wasn't called a penalty because those guys are just competing and the initial contact is made inside this white stripe of the line. I guess I'd like to see him come downhill a little bit more now, but look, he's he's got a gap in here between the tight end that he's worried about. Always taking on the kickout block. So he doesn't want to he doesn't want to get caught up inside of there. To me, I'd like to see him press this a little bit more into the backfield, possibly get a tackle for loss, or at least impede Taysom Hill so he doesn't get all that momentum to run over Marlin like that. Being a little picky, saying that I'd like him to fill a little bit more because, you know, we know Taysom Hill is a talented runner. Another example, if you ask me, of Queen identifying something pre-snap. actually covered this in another video already. He sees something. Look at him communicating here. He's communicating. He's saying something. I, you know, obviously we don't know, but he's raising his hand and communicating something to the guys lined up outside of him and or the safety. I'm not sure what it is, but he recognizes something because he goes here. He steps up, and this is easy. That, ha that is not chance. That is recognition of something. It could be that the tight end and the back are on the same side and the tight end's in a three-point stance. Could have something to do with this tackle and this guard stance and alignment. You know, you never know. We we get the end zone angle. These guys do too, and they study it. And so guys like Roquan Smith, you saw it in the Saints game, are going to identify something based on looking at the guard and or the tackle and sometimes the center. Queen knows something, and that's why he makes this play. This is not just athleticism, that play. That is awareness. That is film study. Uh, that is intelligence. All right, so here we're going to get a cutback, I think, by Kamara. And Queen is basically going to play a gap that is not his. Urban. Urban doesn't really get scooped. That's actually inaccurate. Urban doesn't get scooped. He gets. He goes to a knee, and 74 just cuts him off. Right? He's in a tight, tight five. So technically, Urban is responsible for the C gap. Harrison's responsible for that D gap. Roquan Smith would be a B gap player. You know, Queen could play that gap, and then maybe we're two gap in the nose. Some... A lot of times, to be honest with you, in these tight fives like this, what looks like an odd front, you'll have one guy two-gapping and the rest of the guys one-gapping. So they'll be slanting people. It doesn't look like we do here. It's zone. And you can see they've double-teamed our center. They've double-teamed Matabike. you got a two-way go for Kamara. Roquan's trying to go to the front side. Kamara cuts it back. Queen's playing in a gap that's not his, meaning that's a good thing. All right, Queen's playing – Playing this as if it's going to go outside. Kamara cuts it back because it's not stretch. It makes a good play. Still, look, still a great gain, right? We don't. What we don't want to happen is we don't want Urban to go to a knee. This is very similar to two plays I showed you earlier. I think it was both Matt and BK when I said he got scooped. Now Urban didn't get scooped here. He went down on the ground. You you want to see Urban try to try to win to the inside here and or the edge player run down the line of scrimmage and help on this cutback. 
as it is, Queen is the first guy to make contact like six or seven yards downfield, which is not ideal. Another example of his ability to redirect, which is you know why I showed you that last play, it's going to be another two-way go by Kamar. Kind of looks like duo, a little bit like you know some people will call it inside zone. Sometimes those two things are are difficult to distinguish from each other because you got a double team, a double team, and it's against our nickel, right? So it's against our four-two in a box. So when I say four-two, two LLBs, two D tackles, that's your four and then your two inside backers. All right, don't call it a 2-4, it's not. It's a 4-2. You got the double teams. Kamara technically has a two-way go, so Queen is staying in the front side of that, and then as soon as Kamara redirects on the backside, Queen is there. You got to get a seventh guy into the box somehow, You know whether it's turning the base block back outside and letting it spill or having a DB strong safety get involved with the fit right here because you can see – Bowser's trying to just stuff the tight end, you know, and condense that gap back into the backfield. He's not able to condense it at all. He didn't get any horizontal movement. He being Bowser didn't get any horizontal movement backwards. And we got a late fill by Marlon, and then a great job, if you ask me, of Queen overlapping this. Yeah, it's still a six or seven yard gain, but again, Queen is the guy to make first contact into a gap that may or may not actually be his. Let me know what you guys think of Patrick Queen. And his play, especially recently, I think he's leveled up without Roquan Smith, for real. And then with Roquan Smith, I think we're looking at a guy who might be leveling up 1.5 levels or even two. The awareness was already there. I think the Browns game shows that. Actually, I didn't show you any games, any plays from the Bucs. I just realized that. I'm not sure why I didn't include any of those. That was a mistake. Because there was one play in the Bucks game where it was very similar to the Browns where he identified something pre-snap and he just went. He just attacked it. To me, the awareness level was already there. Roquan Smith's just going to add to that. I don't know what it means for his contract situation after next year with Roquan Smith being there and Lamar, you know, hopefully getting re-signed. If not this week, then, you know, once we win the Super Bowl. But in my opinion, like Patrick Queen's playing extremely well lately and deserves credit for that, playing a lot more physical, asked to play a lot of coverages, a lot of techniques in all of our coverages, I should say. I still think we've got issues sometimes when he's to the boundary and the nickel defender is to the other side of the field. I think there's some things the Ravens should do to try to mitigate that, maybe move Kyle Hamilton to that, situ that side. But we're using Hamilton to the field a lot as the nickel defender. Teams like the Packers in 2021 really picked on Queen to the boundary with two, two receivers to the boundary against our nickel. So basically he didn't have a nickel defender to help him. Some of our coverages to the boundary got exploited. I think he's gotten better at those things this year. He's generally given up the shorter pass plays to the boundary as opposed to bigger pass plays or seam routes. Let me know what you think of Patrick Queen's play so far, what you think of how I broke down the plays for you, uh, and how accurate you think that breakdown was. Appreciate you guys checking the video out.